Uh, last week, it was obviously in the news that Tim Wakefield had been battling cancer and had recently been diagnosed and had recently uh, had treatment, which involved surgery. And yesterday at 57 years old, after that, that brief uh, illness, and thankfully it was brief, I guess, in some regard, you, you're thankful at least for something, I guess. I don't know, to try and find a, a silver lining there. But horrible, horrible news and a real gut punch to anyone who has been a Red Sox fan for uh, decades and has known Tim Wakefield to be a part of that experience for decades, whether you watched him on the field or saw him in the booth or were touched by him in some way for all the charity work that he did with the Red Sox Foundation and with the Jimmy Fund. Uh, this, This just feels really, really bad that, Tim Wakefield, who everybody knew and loved. And that's the thing I think that sticks out about Tim Wakefield and why this feels so bad and is so sad, that he was in the rare class of Boston athlete who was universally liked. Really. Just universally liked. Was never controversial as a player. Really wasn't. We talk about players all the time, right? As fans, yep. as media, you're talking about the team, you're criticizing a player. Tim Wakefield was never that guy. You will not find someone that says, ah, Tim Wakefield can't stand that guy. Yeah. Right? That that's just that that was never and, and I'm talking strictly as a player, not as a person now, right? As a player, which is how most people know him as a player. Yeah. But I think it spoke to who he was from a personality standpoint, too. And I think everyone views that guy as who he truly was, which was a class act all the way. That's who Tim Wakefield was. And so I think that's why it hurts because you rooted for him as a player. You had to have liked him. If you're a Red Sox fan, you liked Tim Wakefield. And the more you know of him, the yeah, I more just, you think of him. I just like nice guys. Like I'd, I've done some stuff with him in the off seasons where uh, you run into him at golf tournaments or events or speaking things that you do together. And, you know, sometimes you're doing like, this guy's a phony. <laughs> you know, this guy, this guy doesn't like people. He's just coming here. He's taking a check. He's one of the most genuine guys I've I've been around, like in Boston. And to know the effect he had on people, we, you know, like the Jimmy fund and, you know, helping kids out and just a likable guy. He was different. He was a knuckleball pitcher. He wasn't a guy that's going to blow you away with 98 very, Always the, looking out for other people, whether it was looking out for teammates, yeah. looking out for all the people he helped with his charity work. I mean, that's who this guy was. And it just it feels so awful to lose Tim Wakefield at only 57 years old. Doran breaks so yesterday. He's so, yeah. he so synonymous with the last nearly three decades of Red Sox baseball. He has always been present when it comes to the Red Sox. He's always been there if you've been – a Red Sox fan at any point in the last three decades, you've watched Tim Wakefield at some point. You just, you couldn't avoid him because he was so present and he loved the Red Sox organization. He loved this city. Yeah. He's not from here. He's not from here, but he certainly became a Bostonian over the last three decades in Boston and made his home here. And this is where he was a permanent fixture since 1995 when he exploded onto the scene in Boston, finished third in the Cy Young award they won the american league east that was electric the games were over in like two hours flat oh so awesome (laughs) he was Um, the best when he came onto the scene and then he stayed around for another two decades pitching for the red Sox. and and you know what the my favorite sort of tim wakefield moment is not 2007 everyone's brought up 2007 with with uh mike timlin talking about how selfless he was as a teammate and knowing that it was best for him to not be on the World Series roster. My favorite wake moment was after they won the ALCS in 04. Because when he gave up the home run to Boone in 2003, he took that really hard. He thought it was going to be the end. Yeah. And it's, it's so interesting that when that happened, I think if that's any other pitcher, Boston swears off the pitcher like, oh, that's the guy who gave up the Meatball home. City. Meatball City. T- yeah. Nobody in Boston held Tim Wakefield responsible for anything to do with the ending in 2003. Now, we had Grady Little to thank for that, but no one looked at Tim Wakefield like he hadn't done his job. Right. And as a competitor, as you heard you say, just a fierce, tremendous competitor, 
he took that really hard and and was really sort of shook by that. And the way they came back the next year and won it and how instrumental he was in that and how fired up he got on the mound along the way in that playoff run. You go back and you see that. Like, Tim Wakefield was not this fiery guy, but was in those moments. And I'll never forget, they won the ALCS. And there was a similar to Timlin video with Johnny Damon, where Johnny Damon takes the ALCS trophy and brings it over to Wakefield in the clubhouse after they beat the Yankees, and he's crying at his at his locker stall. And it's like, this guy still a year later was like feeling relief that they had now gotten over that hump when nobody had been holding that guy responsible. But I think it just speaks to everything that he was. I mean, everybody everybody's going to write about it. They have, you know, Shaughnessy's articles, you know, Buck, um, Bob Ryan, you know, all that commentary. The guys have covered him forever. Um, but I watched during our breaks of our game when this was all going down, and Nesson put it out. The Veritech reactions you heard there at the end, I can't tell you how many times I watched it yesterday. Watch it again on the plane. Um, I thought that one that one summed it up the best. Like, like that's your former captain. That's the guy that knew him as good as anybody. That you know, sort of carried over here as these guys are still like you mentioned around, not from here, but you know, these guys are gonna they're they're, they're lifers here now, and uh, they're part of the community, they're part of the city, they're part of the fabric. You know of uh, you know the fan base, and uh, just Veritex reaction. I thought it really came through. Like that, that one, that 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 gets you choked up. It gets you choked up watching that. Like those are the guys closest to him. Those are the guys closest to him. That's just it's sad. It's sad the way this all went down last week. Guy couldn't have his own peace. You know, last three days on earth. So kind of bullcrap the way that all went down. Yeah, I mean, how okay, many guys? Details. How many guys can say they played with you know, Mike Greenwell and uh, Jacoby Ellsbury? <laughs> I just I I, I spanned uh, from the mid '90s to was it twenty? What year was his last year? Eleven? Was it eleven? Uh, was it last year, Tyler? I think it was eleven. Yeah, twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. Right. So, Tyler, you just to, to name random players from one era to another several eras later. I mean, that's, that's again, that's who Tim Wakefield was. So that was just really, really sad news yesterday on the passing of Tim Wakefield, who will uh, always be a Red Sox legend, will always be synonymous with the Red Sox, and uh, very sad for all of Red Sox nation to hear that news uh, yesterday.